It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. We are happy that you are joining us on another week of videos. It is a Monday, y'all, and you are accustomed to having metal music on a Monday, but it's also a very important Monday because I checked I checked the calendar and this year this year Valentine's Day is on uh, is on the 14th. So that is today. It is a Monday, but it is also Valentine's Day, and so I brought along my Valentine. Oh, thank and you. Uh, we're going to be listening to a classic love song uh, today, and the song is "Maybe I'm Amazed" by Paul McCartney. We yes. picked this one for a few reasons. One, it's Paul McCartney. Yes. Right? And it's a classic, classic love song. But the other reason that we picked it is because one of our other favorite musicians, Mark Cohn, did a really interesting and lovely cover of this song. So we're going to listen to both versions. They're quite different. They're the same song, uh, but uh, they're quite different vibes. So uh, let's have a good little... Uh, Valentine's romantic love song uh, episode today, shall we? So maybe I'm amazed by Paul McCartney. It was uh, from his first solo album called McCartney. It was recorded and released in 1970. He wrote the song in 1969 as the Beatles were breaking up, right? And it was uh, uh, recorded at Abbey Road's studios in uh, February of 1970. Uh, the album was released on April 17th of 1970, just seven days after Paul had announced that the Beatles were officially done. Wow. Right? I think I heard something about it. I don't know if there's truth to it or not, but um, that he wrote this for Linda because um, I don't know if he'd had like emotional trouble or trauma or breakdown or some sort like coinciding with the breakup of the Beatles. I don't know yeah. if there's truth yeah, to that. Yeah, I mean, but... well, think about it. It's a very emotional thing. Right. Uh, he even says, uh, uh, oh man, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm a man, maybe I'm a lonely man who's in the middle of something. That, that he doesn't and, really understand. And I think that he's referring to like his entire musical identity with the Beatles kind of crashing to you know, a halt right. and through it all, his relationship with Linda was a grounding and supportive relationship during that time. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, another little tidbit, uh, this was released like, uh, at, and the, the Beatles announced their breakup, like as the Apollo 13 mission right. was, was, was happening. So that's a little, uh, historical, uh, centering here. One thing I didn't realize that I found in our read-in today, uh, Paul plays all of the instruments on the recording. He plays guitars, he plays bass, he plays piano, he plays the organ, he plays drums. Don't think I knew about that. So and Linda really cool. is credited with uh, <laughs> providing some backing vocals. Sadly, she died of breast cancer in 1998. But we're going to uh, listen to this classic song, Paul McCartney, maybe. I'm amazed. I think surely he's amazed by this point, don't you think? It's not a maybe I mean, anymore. Yes. You know, but it's um, it's a really great bit of alliteration. Maybe I'm amazed, right? With those M's coming. It's really kind of cool. Yeah. You ready to go? You got the cans on? <laughs> got the cans on. All right, let's do, let's it. do it. Here is Paul McCartney's Maybe I'm Amazed. Here we go. That sets up as a five chord, but it goes to a different key Baby, I'm amazed way for the verse. And you get the bass line. Well, that was your part. Baby, I'm Next time, sing my part. Do you want me to sing it? I'm <laughs> He lands on C, and then he goes to a completely different key. He goes up a step, and it sounds like a Beatles tune, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds like it sounds like it could have been with all the odds in the background. <laughs> I can sing along with Paul. 
turns minor for a second, then it's two to five, and then back into the original key. So he's got B flat, F, and then C. And I think C is where he is. That was my point. Not you said it. Not you said it. It starts on the end of two. There's ten notes in that chromatic scale. There's flat six to five to one. And then... Turns to five seven to four and goes to... The four chord. Back to D. So major D, minor D, E minor to A, and then B e flat. So he's got two different progressions going on in two different keys. Okay. The chromatic scale starts on low C and it ends up on a B flat. Hear the chunky, little, little chunky guitar. And then the organ comes in. And the pictures are just. Here's the 5 7 organ. There you go. It's such a fun little song, isn't it? I'm amazed at the way you love me all the time, but maybe I'm afraid of the way I love you. What do you think he means by that? Maybe I'm amazed at the way you pulled me out of time. That can do that, right? Our relationships can pull us out of that and give us some comfort. Yes. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And he's just going to fade out, I think. Well, I love that bass right there. Yeah, could have gone on for a while. Um, you asked about the line, maybe I'm afraid of the way I love you. Mm. Um, I think that... Um, I think that's something a lot of people can relate to, no? Yeah. The, it's scary to... To know um, how vulnerable you are. Yes, to be so so vulnerable yeah. as to give your heart to somebody. But especially when... Um, if assuming that this is what we think it is and that he's been going through sure. something emotional or some sort of emotional trauma... Um, when you when you're with somebody when you have a partner of a uh, of uh, a spouse mm. of a significant other who is there and helps you through that time it's already scary enough to to do it on your own but then you also know that you're relying on that person mm. um to is help my you reliance get fair it. to them yes am I, am I being too needy am i being too reliant should i be stronger yeah uh it's it's all of this give and take you and i both know how that feels mm -hmm. it's true yeah and it's but, hard but yeah the, uh, and it is scary the fun part is we're going to listen to mark cone's but at the same time, version though, of this too i'm sorry all right, to interrupt all right. you but at the we'll same listen time to that in though, a second. you also know it is scary but it's also um um that that other person becomes an anchor mm. for you and so. like reassuring yes yeah yes so yeah. the reason why we're listening to mark cone's version of it besides the fact that i think it's really cool and it's interesting really and it provides uh the same song but in a, in a completely different performance aesthetic different okay deal. so if you haven't listened to yeah. this it's really cool mark cone included this uh, on his album called Listening Booth 1970. It was mm -hmm. his fifth studio re uh, album that he released back in 2010. It's an album comprised of a collections of songs that all were recorded in 1970 that made mm -hmm. a lasting impression 
on him as a kid. Yeah. I found a quote by him and he said this, it was the beginning of me really falling in love with records and albums and becoming obsessed as a fan. I was a little kid dreaming to find a way to make that a career. And that was the music that started me on that path. And so he's got an entire album of cover songs and uh, the, the, the unifying theme is that all of these songs, I think one was written and recorded a few years earlier, but there was like a, a really right. cool cover version of it. Uh, if I'm remembering right, oh. it was Joe Cocker did a cover of, now I can't remember the song. Uh, but, um, you know, but all of these other songs, you know, 1969 is kind of looked to as a landmark year, but 1970, there's a lot of great songs. And in actually, 1970. you and I were trying to remember what it was he had said when we, um, at one of the, show, one of Mark. Yeah, Collins we've seen him several times. Shows that we went to. He talked, he talked about when, when Listening Booth, mm -hmm. the album was released. Um, I think that he was saying that there was this year that an album of, of, of hits or was it covers of things? Anyway, from 1969, because it was a big year for right. her and a lot of great tunes. And he was like, and I think that if I remember correctly, I remember him talking about, um, that he thought to himself, that's true. But then he thought back to, back to that time period and, and what year were the songs like what, and thought and thought to himself, what songs were the ones that really got for me, sure. um, when I really had an awareness of them, they really hit me mm. in a very personal way. And he, they were from 1970. And mm -hmm. so that's, so he was like, well, it makes a difference. I mean, if it, he may have been then. outside playing with his friends in the summer of 69, <laughs> but in the summer of 70, he was uh, with, yeah. with his record player in like, holy crap, well, yeah. listen to all these tunes. Yeah. So we have a shared history of listening. To Mark Cohn early on when we were dating. I, I uh, loved Mark Cohn's music early on. In fact, one of my early recordings uh, that I had of Mark Cohn was his second album called yes. The Rainy Season. And I remember sharing that with you and it became a favorite that we listened to over and over and over again. And when did you first share it with me? Oh God. Do you remember? I uh, Was it our first date? It was our first date. I, I passed y'all. <laughs> But here's where I don't pass. Check this out. Okay. The date and year of our first date. Hmm. He knows this. December 7, 1999. I don't even know that. 1999, that... I know. December, I know. Yeah. But the It's how I remember date... dates as I try to tie them to other things. It was Pearl Harbor Day. Yes. Right? So April 7th. If I can remember one of the two December things. 7. Yes. Is that what I said? It's okay. Anywho, we listened to the rainy season all the time, and when we had yeah. to be apart, we were you know we really uh, uh, came to enjoy those songs. And through the years, we have gone to several of Mark's shows. He's a great performer. Oh God! You know, yeah. A really engaging personality yeah. on stage. And our favorite couple of times that we went to see him in concert was on Valentine's Day mm -hmm. in New York City. He's been doing these uh, Valentine's Day shows yeah. at the City Winery in New York City. And we went to the very first one, I think. Uh, he yes. did it. Uh, so we went two years, uh, mm -hmm. 2013 and 2014. Mm -hmm. And it's a great little venue uh, to have some great wine and some food and yeah, to, uh, to listen to a show with an intimate audience. It's moved to a different location now. Yeah, which is a whole the, other story. The city winery is is yeah. in a different location than where it used to be. Story. I remember that first year he had <laughs> special guest Roseanne Cash. Oh man! And it was wonderful hearing her uh, Roseanne sing. and um, John Leventhal was there. Yes. Uh, and I think this year he's They're still amazing. doing it, and I think Sean Colvin is yeah. joining him. But let's yeah, listen Sean to Colvin. Mark's version of uh, this song. Maybe I'm amazed. Okay, Are you ready? My... You got to put your cans back I on. Put them back on. Okay, this is from Mark's album called Listening Booth 1970. Yeah. Here it is. It's a whole different feel. Isn't it? Yeah. He's in a lower octave, so he's singing in the, uh, an I'm octave lower than where uh, Paul was. But he's also doing something different. He's not an Maybe entire I'm octave lower. 
this song, is, uh, his version is in a different key. Yeah. If uh, Paul was in C and D, then Mark is in D and E. Because yes. here's the move. And it's a brighter key, right? So he didn't move it all the way down the octave. He moved it down a seventh and just put it right in the good little pocket for his voice. And I, and I really do like uh, the way that the, the vocal is a little more subdued. It's not, you know, right? All, you know, which is Paul's, you know, original vision for the song. But I really do like this more contemplative and easygoing, intimate. Uh, it's a little slower tempo. Well, I don't know which one I, or if I like one better than the other. Because Paul's was so passionate and strongly felt. And this is more... Maybe I'm a man, maybe I'm a long this man who's in the middle of something. We've been in it together it for a long really time. Understand. Uh, and yeah. that's why it's a little more... Done all we've, we've lived this life together for sure. That's how this is a great interpretation. Strikes the way you're with me all the time. Maybe I'm afraid of the way I leave you. Maybe I'm afraid of the way you leave you. He hasn't done it all the time, but occasionally he does put that dramatic ascending line in. Maybe I'm amazed at the way I read. Direct modulation. Up a up a step. It just kind of brightens the mood. The direct modulation up a full step gets you to a much brighter key than where you left it. No matter what key you started in, right? You're always adding two sharps. Baby, won't you help me understand? on that half cadence right i love it that's how that's how it ends i love it it's um it's such a classic tune y'all and yeah. um uh i love being able to um to share uh these classic songs <laughs> fix, my hair. fix your hair your cans are messing <laughs> up your hair luckily you know it's the mind is beyond saving so it's just kind of what are you talking it's about it's kind of up there i put You've them got on great hair my, well let's say my hair is resilient your hair defies air. The, the cans can't keep it down. The air defying, gravity defying hair. I'm lucky I still have some. It doesn't. It doesn't grow <laughs> down. It just grows out. For sure, and and you know whatever. <laughs> ah! Oh no! Now I can't see anything. <laughs> That's well, one this for the video. Reel. That's is... one for the blooper. Reel. <laughs> We're still gonna take this one, y'all, because we've been recording for a while. But <laughs> it's such a. Um, you know, there's something about Valentine's Day it just reminds us uh, to pay attention to and honor the relationships that are important in our lives and to value uh, the people and the individuals that that um, that help us and accompany and to us. Tell, and to express it. Yeah. To express it. And to say so. Yeah, it's, very, it's, it's Show very, very helpful. And express. You know, uh, well, you know, it's it's wonderful that Paul is still with us and still making music and yeah. doing his thing. And I know that Mark is still at it, and he's yeah. at uh, the City Winery tonight. Yes. Even I think there's a live stream of their show. I think they're doing, they're doing it tonight and tomorrow. And there's a live stream available. So if you tomorrow. want to uh, yeah. to tune in. This is a plug for Mark, but uh, I think you can do it through the city city winery yeah. website. New They're York great shows. City. We have a wonderful. We in fact was it that first year we paid extra uh, as we left. They recorded it. We did, and they were like, "Why?" <laughs> <laughs> we're like, "Cause they you were, offered it." <laughs> they were offering a um, uh, a recording. 
uh, via like MP3 download of, of that night's performance. Of that night's performance. Yeah. They recorded it like at the board and they had, you know, a digital file. Yeah. And, and, and we we're had like, such a good time. we had a great time. So yeah. we're like, sure. So we go back and we listen to that uh, that little special uh, performance. I still do. Often. Yeah. Yeah. It's great stuff. So Y'all, happy Valentine's Day. Happy every Valentine's Day. Everybody. Uh, so talking about expressing our appreciation, we appreciate all of you. Absolutely. More than we yeah. have adequate words for. Yeah. So this is so much fun to be able to connect with all of you and share some great music. Yeah. And maybe I'm amazed. It's a great classic song. So thanks everybody for hanging out with both of us today on this special Valentine's Day edition of The Daily Doug. And we will see you next time on the next edition of The Daily Doug.